Hello everybody. Today I'd like to speak about the current of the sixth suite. This current is similar to the first suite current. So we have in here, if you look at bar, say middle of bar 12. So it's really the same material. This is about a hundred times more difficult. The very opening we have what was later called the Mannheim Rocket. Let's hear some examples from Beethoven. So this uh, rocket is that broken D major chord going up. In a fifth cello sonata by Beethoven, we have the beginning. And here, you get the idea. In the end of the first half of this dance, the rocket is coming down. And uh, at the very end of the movement, we have... So, again, the rocket is coming down. You can help make this clear, uh, this broken chord uh, going up clear by sitting a little bit on the main notes of the chord. So... So... So those will be the D, the F sharp, the A, the D, F sharp, and the A. When we were the beginning of the second half of this dance, I also like to bring out those main notes of the broken chord. So... And in tempo, the first two bars of this dance are one unit. Here I feel that the music can still be interpreted as, as two bars at a time or in smaller units of one bar. the cadential gesture. Generally speaking, the harmony moves in one harmony per bar. Sometimes the upbeat will be in a different harmony. So this is a simple harmonic language which translates to a faster tempo. When the harmony is dense, when the harmonic language is rich, uh, the listener needs more time to process the information. But when the harmony is uh, relatively simple, this is a clue to us to play a little faster. As I said, the bar seven is cadential and uh, the cadence ends on the low D in bar eight. So you can take a little time after that. So, so there's an, a new beginning on the F sharp. Bach wrote a very similar cadence or cadential gesture in the prelude of the fifth suite. This is from the fifth suite, and here we have. I wanted to quote Alan Winnold's book about the cello suites, where he writes that awareness of the typical melodic gestures that composers use in music to signal the end of a musical unit is like awareness of uh, typical spoken gestures that people use in a conversation to signal the end of a thought or the end of a conversation. And this gesture and its uh, variations are used frequently throughout the Quran. So if we look at the end of this Quran. <laughs> So here in the beginning, so far we feel the music in either one bar unit or two bar units, measures 15 to 19, I feel that the, the beat is more often, it, it comes on every quarter of the 
bar. <laughs> Really, each quarter gets a little bit of an accent, and that's due to the slurs also. Um, so a lot of them are one and three. In measure 20, we're back to feeling the bigger one bar unit. Similarly, the last beat of measure 59 goes into one beat pattern. There is a tradition playing this movement with uh, always hooking the 16th notes, uh, such. When I compared the Anna Magdalena copy to Kellner's, uh, I noticed there were no slurs until measure 8, which really strengthened my conviction that the pattern of always slurring the 16th notes is not what originally was notated by Bach. Another thing that stood out was the similarity in Anna Magdalena's and Kellner's copies regarding bars 18 and 19. The slur pattern that we saw in bar 18 is stopped and the notes are indicated separately in both those copies. Bar 24 again shows some slur indications uh, between the two copies that are similar. So let's play first bar 18. I'll start from bar 17. <laughs> Try avoiding uh, repeating the same slurs each time when sequences occur. It looks like Bach actually varies the slurs when the music is relatively simple to keep the interest of the listener. For example, uh, starting 12, 13, 14, uh, bar 15. So, and here. This is just my interpretation of the Anna Magdalena copy, but try and see what works for you. And I believe it's not uh, just four and four. It's not. This is, uh, sounds very monotonous to me. In bar 34, uh, we have a cycle of fifths. So. Uh... So if you pay attention to the green notes, um, D, C sharp, this is a sign, a telltale sign that those units come in, in two bars at a time. There's sequences. Etc. Musicologist Alan Winold calls the material happening in bars 35 and again in bar 37. He calls it interpolation and it does sound like a remark interjected in the middle of a conversation. So... Um, so those 16th notes that are moving uh, between the 8th notes are the interjections. So... Um, you can think of that this way. In bar 41, we have another a cadential gesture. Uh, so, you can place that and take a little bit of time after that. Something like that. I like bringing out those core notes, the pillars of support. For example, in bar 58. So, uh, F sharp. As you may have noticed, I'm trying to avoid shifts by using fingerings that will correspond to slurs so that if the next note is separate, it will 
give me a chance to move to the next position without an audible shift. Here. I try to change those Ds, for example, bars 65 and 66. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.